Hey guys, and welcome to part 5 of How to Paint Sepsimus the Plague Sworn. So this week we're going to be looking at the glazing in that pale armor. Uh, this is the kind of like the fun, the fun bit. So I thought we'd just focus on that today, um, and then next week we'll move on to the uh, secondary details, you know, the cloth, all the other little bits and pieces that are on him. Um, but today I thought we'd just focus on the glazing, because this will be nice and fun, something enjoyable to just have a little go at and focus attention on. So. In front of me we have our usual suspects that I like to use. We're not going to be using green for this one because there's already a ton of green in, in the armor itself. So we have a look. Um, you know, there's no real reason to really do that. So we're going to just go straight into um, most likely the purples and the blues for predominantly and then we'll try to mix in a little bit of yellows and maybe even put a few spot areas of um, red. But the magenta is probably going to wash out a little bit and go a bit grey in those areas because of the green and red um, mixing together. So probably won't be using much of that, but maybe in some spots or maybe the, the paler areas it might show up. Um, but mostly it's just going to be the purple and the blue with a little bit of maybe the yellow. So um, I'm going to set up the palette now and um, let's get started. All right, so to begin with I think we'll go with the purple. So we'll uh, Bring a bit of water in, into the side here, drag it across, and we're looking for that really diluted consistency again. So much like many of my previous tutorials, we're going to be getting some really soft colors brought into that armor, and we're just looking for something like that, quite transparent, two or three drops of water, and then drag that across to maybe one drop of, of the, the ink shade there, mm -hmm. and we should end up with something pretty good. Wipe most of it off, so you've only got a little bit on the brush, and just any size brush that you feel comfortable using. This is about a one, I think. So something like that. And what we're going to start with is probably just looking at shadows and areas where we want to see some color just to vary up this green a little bit. And in the, any of these little blemishes and stuff like that, any of these little cracks and grooves around edges where seams and armor meet, we're just going to start moving this in and just see what it feels like. We'll start with the belly here and just uh, gently wash in a little bit of that color just to kind of see how it feels and we'll be doing little little streaky patterns and things like that on here as well so we'll, we'll drag some down just to make it feel like something's dripping out you know and remembering we're kind of thinking of this as flesh so all these little rivets here they could be you know actually like boils or things like that or we're going to simulate that kind of look for it so we just start out pretty lightly and just start building in some of these colors just to see how it reacts on the edges of things you know just slowly but surely feathering in dotting and just doing some little motions to start bringing in some interest into those areas we just move it around wash in all of this area here we're going to move that away from green bring some of that purple in, you know, get that quite dark. So we're seeing a real difference. <clears throat> and, um, you know, bring out some of these little drips coming down. We just wash that in. And you can be really playful with it. You can go as heavy or as light as you like. I think we'll probably build up a lot of color around this to make it feel like it's, uh, I guess, you know, saw or, you know, something's really quite wrong with this part of the the armor. So we'll just bring in these purples, get it looking pretty interesting. So it's moving more towards a, I guess, a, a almost even a subtle magenta there, but it'll be mostly like a lavender color. But we can really just play with that and just keep building it up. So just move it around push in a little bit of that color in there, make sure we're seeing it into all these little cracks around rivets and just keep building that up until you're liking what you're seeing. So you just keep moving it around and at first it's going to feel like not much is happening but as we slowly go over it and build up that color you're going to start to see a difference and we just keep going with that and then once we're happy with all the areas that we've got the purple 
then we'll move into the blues and the blues are going to react with that purple and it's going to build up that color even further and you're going to start to see things uh, change a lot on the model so we want to be careful how much we put on we still want to keep this nice pale uh, tone going but just just giving that that difference so we see something else happening on, on this armor um, watching out for too much staining so see how we had a little stain there so instead of just going back and trying to fix that I've turned that into a drip just had a little bit of interesting stuff happening there come back and just build in so you just work with what you've got you know you don't need to uh, worry too much this is a Nurgle follower so it can be a little bit you know messy as it were but we are going for I guess something that's a bit more like a heavy metal style so it's a bit more uh, directed a bit more uh, considered with how far you push all of that all of those kinds of um, I guess effects or blemishes you're being a bit more careful with it we can see now that's starting to build up and so that's the kind of thing we're going for just building in these light lavender tones purple tones putting some little drips in and just building that up and once once we've gone through and done all that you know just all around the model in various areas we'll come back and do the blue so I'll be back soon okay so I thought I'd bring you back in just to show you how it's going so you can see here I'm just starting to build up that that purple tone and some of these drips have had multiple passes on them you just let them kind of dry a bit and then keep going back over and what you'll find is so as we're doing it because the paint is so watered down this this wash um, very glazy sort of pass and the model is so dry and you're just using the tip what will happen is you get little micro dots occurring as you do these little drags and little dots um, and those sort of simulate I guess they're at the right size for this model and so you're getting very realistic little drips and, and that sort of thing over the surface of the, the armor and so that's really cool and so then if you let that sort of dry just a little bit and then you re-go into it you end up with these really nice little fine uh, drips and you can just add to them and just keep going and darkening them down just picking out ones that are cool to darken and you'll see that the the purple here really reacts well with that pale color that's on there the yellow so you end up you end up seeing that red and that magenta coming through um, without actually having to put any on which is a really good thing and so I've tried to add in especially around the base here these these feet um, just try to make that a little darker so I'll come in here with a little more and the great spots to do it is like a shadow just before you get to the highlight so in these sort of areas here just before the edge and if you add a little bit of that in it sort of gives this weird uh, sort of pinkish purplish kind of hue um, to where you know maybe there's yeah, a lot of soreness or whatever around those ends just sort of like um, how you get a lot of redness in your elbows and that sort of thing where blood's coming to the surface it just simulates something like that something weird that's going on with this armor that really shouldn't be happening and um, also darkening down around the feet is good because that'll help plant it onto the base when we when we um, paint the base it's going to feel more more grounded um, because a lot of the time this type of I guess effects like if you look at zombie movies and you look at the the way that they um, they paint up the, the prosthetics and the, the makeup on them um, the feet and those lower areas are often a lot darker if, if you're if they actually show the full the full figure you'll notice that it'll probably be a lot darker down there um, and that's to sort of show the the blood settling and congealing and all of that type of stuff which is you know gross but um you know really good for Nurgle right so you're just adding so as you're going around you're just adding those areas to just darken stuff down and and give you a nice a nice um, I guess broad coverage of color so we're seeing those purples and magentas and pinks coming through I've done a couple of passes around this area to, so that you can really see it even on this camera you can see the the variation there now so already that's just bringing this thing to life so I'll just continue um, working on that and doing the arms and around the, around the head and then um, yeah we'll move on to the, the blues and the blues will help us deepen the shadows again and give us even more depth of color so that should that should work out really well and there we go there's all that lovely purple lavender colors magenta's even coming out when they're mixing with that uh, that yellow that's in the in, in that uh, flesh tone there on the armor on the brightest areas and now you can see that 
um, well, this camera is not showing it up totally well, but there is a lot more deep color there that you're seeing. It's not quite as washed out. So you're getting, you know, quite a nice variation. And so, as I said before, these areas where I've liked the drips, I've just gone over them a couple of times just to, just to enrich the color and give you a more satisfying drip like here where you can really see it coming down without broadening it. The, the trick with these kinds of drips is to vary the thicknesses and sizes just to give you um, so it doesn't look too uniform. And then I've sort of stained the ends on some of these areas in that pink um, around the feet and so on, which will bring in some blues in there. In the face, we can see I've sort of made the area around the grill where the where the eyes would be that's all sort of stained with that pinkish tone so that it feels like it's you know um, infected or something like that uh, just to give some focus to that spot and um, yeah it's a really fun process very meditative just you know dabbling around using the very tip of your brush little tiny micro dots and, and slashes and little glazy marks and and trying to vary it up and make sure we see some of the yellow highlight with lavender, you don't want all the edges to be pink. You want them to have a variety just to just to break it up and give you some difference. But yeah, it's coming along really well. So now let's move into the blues. So we just add the water in again, drag it across, give us some nice, light, soft blue here. And this is quite a dark blue, so that's good. It's going to give us, um, and also it's got a lot of black in it, so it's got, it's yeah, you don't really want, like I've said this before, you don't really want like an ultramarine blue for this. You want something a bit darker, a bit deeper in color. Um, that's going to help blend a little nicer. The ultramarine blue is going to be too bright and too saturated for what we're doing here. A lot of these colors are quite desaturated and we're just doing a very soft and, and subtle, subtle work. So we don't want anything too punchy because it's going to end up ruining the balance that we've already established. So for the blue, let's start on here again. We don't need a lot of this, but we just want to use it in places to um, just deepen some of these areas, maybe a few of the drips. We want to do less of the model this time. We're not looking to make this all blue. We like the, the purple here, just in places where you're going to get maybe a little deeper shadow or something that you just want to turn away from just pure uh, purple. And you can put a few little drips in. We're going to come in, in in the final stages with like some, probably some like um, some real deep purple here, like a, a like an actual purple color, and do the final drips in that to give some areas of like you know actual paint work for for the drip drips and so on. Um, sort of like I've done in the past with the the previous tutorials. So we'll end up doing that. But um, for now, we're just looking for some areas where we can just add a little bit of that blue in even over some areas where, you know, it might have uh, stained with that pinkish tone, like let's say just down on this area here, we could come in with the blue and then turn it more to a bluish tone, or it's actually going to go, so it's funny, the purple goes a bit more magenta, and when you put the blue over it, it goes a bit more purple again, so um, a sort of bluish purple. So you can add some areas where instead of just having all pinks, you might just add in some of this blue and turn it to a more... Um, a more deeper kind of purplish tone so where it's bruising even further just like you have on flesh so you're just mucking around with this as I said much less of the model mostly in like deeper shadows and stuff where you want to see something a little deeper in areas and then you can go over some of these and vary it up so not over everyone but over some and that will give you some that are a bit more purplish and some that are a bit more uh, in the magenta tone and that's just a fun little thing just to draw your eye. These are all really, really subtle work, right? So we're not doing anything too crazy here. Just finding areas of interest that feel good. You know, put some music on in the background. Just chill out and just let, let, your, let your brush run across that and find all the little spots that seem really cool to you or just interesting to add in a little bit of extra color. Okay, and we're just bringing those little details across anywhere where that feels good you know just generally working your way around don't, not focusing too much on any one area because then you'll build up too much color and too much um, contrast in that spot and then everywhere else will feel weird and different so just working it in where you think might be fun and then moving away from that area 
and then coming into another spot and it's just using the very tip of your brush you can see that I'm barely touching the surface I'm just caressing it lightly and letting letting those little tiny droplets of, of, um, of ink just move in whatever direction they want to go and then just directing it and pushing it around until I've got a satisfying mark and that's really all you want to do just soft little touches and we'll just keep going around and just adding in some of that variation so we get some, some areas that are slightly bluish or purplish and some that are slightly more magenta pink lavender so I'll go away and do that and then we'll take a take a look at it all right and now for the final step so this come out really cool so we can see the blue you're not really going to notice like a huge amount but it is there so just some areas are going to look a little bit deeper and darker in those in those pink areas than others so you're not doing it over everywhere so it's just a very subtle difference in tone but it is making a, a big difference overall and your eye will will find more interest um, you know in its entirety so that's really cool so now we're going to do something a little bit scary now we're going to add in the yellow we don't want to add very much of this but we do want a very very subtle bit of it and I think we're going to do it just in around all of the little rivets first just to see how that goes and I think that's about as much as we're going to do just some little spots of yellow um, very very softly so with the yellow you want to be very careful because it is extremely strong um, maybe even an orange would have been better here I'm not really quite sure but um, this is a very strong color it's the same problem with using the ultramarine blue like a very bright blue over this darker one this type of yellow is extremely strong so we need very very watered down you know just the hint of yellow in that water basically we just want something very soft and then we're just going to very carefully dab it into these rivets around these rivets just to start shifting them towards the yellow it's going to go more of a green I guess but we'll just see how that feels we'll just put a little bit onto these areas just to um, give us the sensation that although these are rivets they might even you know kind of be a, a sort of a boil or you know some sort of growth or at least they're turning into that over time you know just very softly adding in a little bit of that yellow just to add some little spots of it we can even just add some to some of this um, this metal here as well while we're there just a little bit um, just so we've got a few areas here of yellow because we're going to see a little bit of that in the flesh later we'll be just um, bringing up some of those little pock marks and uh, boils and so on and that'll just help to um, tie in a few more colors so it's not just all like monochromatic we want to see more than just one set of colors so we're just dabbing it each time and adding a little bit more as it dries up just to see how that's looking yeah it's looking pretty good that's so very subtle work we'll just see if there's any more little areas there's another one there And it just helps to add a little bit more we don't want to do this over all the armor because it's going to get too too much you know that there's only so much you want to push uh, certain colors there'll be more yellow in the flesh and less up here um, but yeah this is just like a nice little final step just to push that up and I'll wait and, until that's dry and then maybe add a bit more yeah I don't think adding the yellows anywhere else is going to be good um, yeah I think that's just going to end up being too too muddied if we do more of that in other places but I think these rivets are kind of nice it'd be it's a shame there's not more of them on there because that would be um, a fun thing just to add a few more of them here and there but um, yeah I feel like if we start doing that it's going to detract a bit too much we just want very small areas so you can see now it's now just got these few little spots of yellow which are just sitting there it's extremely subtle work but in the end it's going to help we might just add a little bit more into this metal here just around this area here so that we see that yellow also popping through so we have a a nice little movement of yellow moving up and down the model on this central area and we might actually just go and add a little bit of that to some of these these rivets as well so there's a little bit more yellow coming through 
across the model so it's not just in one place. So we'll do that. Just add a little bit of those dots into those areas. Get that yellow popping. Very, very subtle work. But it's these type of final little touches which are going to help just bring your model to life. And that's what we're doing. We're just trying to give this model as much interest as we can with very, 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 you know, non-destructive kind of work. This is the kind of work that you can just do and muck around with without, you know, being fearful of, of destroying all the beautiful work that you've just done, you know. You want to be able to just um, enjoy the process of adding all this in you know, and, and, and get into that because that's, this is, this is you learning about color and learning about, you know, how to control, you know, quite watery paint as well. It's going to improve your motor skills, all that kind of stuff. So that's really cool. So I'll just let that dry. I might do another layer and then we'll take one final look at this. All right. See you soon. So let's take a look. So yeah, that yellow is just helping add just a tiny bit of variation. You can just see it. If you're just looking at the model, you just notice that your eye moves to these little spots of yellow just across that front of that model. It's in a little bit of that brassy armor. It's in a little bit of that, that front part of the armor. I mean, really, this is the focal area. Like the face is obviously the focal, but the, the belly is the true focus of any Nurgle warrior. And um, it's helping just bring that to life there. Um, very, very subtle work but it's worth it, you know, just those little spots. And as we add more yellows and so on into this, these flesh tone areas, um, that will help all of that come together and tie together really well. So next week, we're going to be looking at all of the, the secondary details. So the, the cloth, the, the skulls and so on, the, the, the headdress piece at the back there, um, anywhere that we haven't done um, and build those up. We'll be using scarlet reds for the cloth, you know, a lot of rotted tones for those, those skulls and heads. Um, and, and red, the scarlet red probably for there because the red green combination that's going to help really make this, this uh, whole figure pop and come to life. And then finally, uh, in the final week, we'll come back into that skin, re rebuild it up a bit to bring it in more in line with the rest. Um, and we'll add those yellows in and that will, that will tie it all together. And then our final drips, Snurgle's fun bits uh, into, the, into the end and um, of that stage. And then the base, obviously, and then we should be done. So a couple more weeks and we'll, we'll see this figure all finished. So I hope this has been, um, you know, informative for you and enjoyable process. Hopefully your figure's coming along really cool like this and um, that, yeah, you've learned something from it. I'll leave an overview and the, the recipe and so on, a better image at the end. But otherwise, uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button, like button, all that kind of stuff. It really helps me out. But otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one.